Hello everybody here, Steffi from The Makers and uh, today I'm going to tell you all about how to upcycle your um, clothes, jumpers, um, cushions, bags, anything like this. I'll, I'll give you lots of um, examples and lots of um, demos, um, all needle felted of course but using different methods of how you can em embellish um, items. Sometimes um, you have to do this because you might have to repair them so there is that um, always in mind rather than just making them look pretty you can also make them look um, whole again without without the hole with an H. So um, that's all happening today and um, it's a stash buster so I've got a few bits and bobs of wool just hanging around depending on what you want to make um, so you might have different um, uh, different wools and different things um, at the ready. Right, I've got a few samples here. So I've got a couple of cashmere jumpers, which um, unfortunately were moth eaten. I've got a pair of jeans here um, and I've got a, a scarf here that has been very, very washed out and needs a little bit of uplift, um, like me at most of the days. So um, that's what it's all about today. But before I go ahead, let's say hello to who is here today. It's of course the Easter holiday still. So some of you might be um, not even in the country. I'm also having a bad hair day today again. It's um, it's just one of those things. I don't I don't know. I just need need to tell my hair to behave itself. Um, anyway, we have got Karen here. Um, Ashley is here. Um, Bridget, Diane. Vampire Venom, um, we've got Karen, another Karen here, Pauline, oh I and I've also just remembered I was going to show you um, Eric as well so I'm going to go and get Eric um, very shortly. Oh we've got somebody new here, Vania, um, hello Vania, um, Elaine is here, Diane, Lorna, Jane, Carol, Awkward Prawn and um, I think there might be others joining us, but um, that's absolutely fine if we're a smaller group today. So um, Easter, it's been Easter. Oh my goodness. Yes. So um, Easter this year was a very, very um, quiet event from my part because I actually um, went um, all the way to New York to um, support my daughter at a competition, at a, a sports competition. One of my daughters and I took my other two daughters with me. So that was quite nice. We survived the journey together. Um, Yes, it's, it doesn't change from small children to older children. They still squabble and they still prat around and, um, you know, all this thing that people say, mustn't touch your mobile phone, you get fined. They never, they've never said anything about children in your car. They haven't um, <laughs> banned that. It's, I remember that from when they were really little and um, they said, oh, can't eat in the car, can't drink in the car. I said, somebody remove this thing in the back that just constantly jumps up and down and distracts me and I've got to turn around and pass this and everything have to be like an octopus passing things around um so yes no nobody's ever said anything nobody talks about children in the car and how distracting they can be so anyway that's my moan of the day so let's have a look what today's price is we always do a giveaway on Tuesdays, as you know, on our live stream on YouTube, as well as on Thursday, same week on Thursday on our Facebook page, themakers.co.uk, makers with double S. And then our handle is actually at themakers.co.uk on Facebook if you want to find us there. And um, you can, when you watch it live, you can win yourself a £15 gift voucher. So today we want you to tell us what is your worst fashion moment? Worst fashion moment, and while I'm um, doing this, I'm just gonna walk and get Eric, which I have forgotten <clears throat> um, at the other side of the desk. So I'm just going to get him now, and if you haven't got a clue who Eric is, you will know it in a minute. Um, so basically, tell us your worst fashion moment, pop it into the comments. So um, at the end of the live stream, Alicia, who is here as usual, will uh, pick a winner um, and uh, and then we announce this during the live stream here uh, today on YouTube and then of course it will and be announced in the comments on Thursday on our Facebook replay. Um, and that's, that's that. And oh yes, be, before I um, keep you guessing anymore, this is Eric. This is Eric, um, the Viking, Eric Blood Axe. Oops, <laughs> it's done still now. Oh, he's lost his axe now. Um, he is going to be the project on our summer retreat. He's big. 
He's bigger than I had planned for him um, to be. He's definitely um, able to stand if um, what I, I need to make another one so he can support himself on his legs. I just need to bend them right. Um, and um, he's fully wire armatured, including the hands. So the hands open up with individual fingers there so he can hold on to his um, axe really well and um, onto his shield obviously as well and um, and that's sort of part of the feature he um, yeah what else can I tell you about him you can in the summer retreat you don't have to make a viking you could make a um, gnome a gargoyle a green man you could make anything like that I'm just gonna move him a bit closer so you can have a little look at him he's got a good side and a bad side so um as we all have he's got an almighty big nose so i think the next one that i'm making is going to be slightly smaller he's wearing he's very fetching um sheep skin boots that are tied together with um with wool obviously and he's got a nice um long top on as well um with um with woolly pants and um the, the the what's special about the retreat is that you learn how to make a wire armature figure um you can curl the 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 hair of the of the figure that you're making so these this is actually our monks loud and i've curled it and you will be learning that and then you can also learn how to make him this um life-saving helmet as um he needs it and we make the accessories as well Okay, so that's enough of um, of Eric for now, and I'm just going to show you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's this time of hay fever. It's coming. I'm just going to show you the thumbnail here. So it's at the Wilderness Centre in the Forest of Dean from Friday the 15th to Sunday the 17th of July this year, 2022. And um, you can um, message us info at the makers with two s's.co.uk or give us a call on 01453 839 454. We have got spaces available. I'm not entirely sure if we've got a room left in the big house, but I'm telling you now, if you um, want to camp, this is this is a definitely a quite civilized way to camp. This is not glamping. I'm telling you this now. It's not glamping. If it was, I would say glamping. It is camping. However, it is in bell tents. The facilities are closed, and all you need the bell tent for, which is a big bell tent that sleeps six people comfortably, um, is is to lay your head at night and sleep and dream of woolly sheep and um, lots of stabbing. So, um, the price includes everything from meals to refreshments, materials, tools, tutoring activities and accommodation. And I'm telling you, I promise you, once you've been, you will not regret it. It is just one of these really lovely um, experiences that people um, treasure. Memories are made, let's put it that way. And I'm, I'm delighted to say that I have two um, supporters during the event with me. One is Alicia who came to our winter retreat and the other one is Colette. Colette will be joining us again. She came to our winter retreat too and she's a bit of an expert on um, on large figures as well having needle felted quite a few of those. So I've got two very um, competent helpers who will be um, helping anybody even if you're a total beginner along. Right okay that's enough of all this stuff now let's have a look at upcycled textiles so this was a well this was a moth-eaten jumper i added um some flowers here i will show you how to make these they're all freehand so is that little hedgehog here on the on the bottom and sometimes you can find mussels in awkward places like i've got one here on the back in fact i've got two here on the back and um and sometimes you can really um just go with with wherever the places are that need jazzing up and I've just had an idea for something at the back there so that is um is something I'm going to work on um this is a pair of shorts that has been jazzed up with um with hearts and I'll show you how these are made um so that they look really precise and and very um yeah in a very precise um fashion they're not freehand and then this is another jumper again um, moth eaten and I, uh, the, it started off with holes up here so I've needle felted little bees then I thought oh they need a beehive so I added a beehive there was no hole there and then I added some flowers because bees need flowers 
and um, the other holes that were there were actually here on the sleeve so I've added a couple of bees here on the sleeve as well so it's just to give you an idea of how sometimes you start this and then you carry on and um, this scarf here was one of my favorite scarves I wore it for a couple of years non-stop and it has these beautiful little robins on it except when you wash it it um, they faded and faded and faded and so I've started to trace some of those robins back onto the fat on the onto the scarf by needle felting um, onto directly onto the scarf and I should also say before you ask this has been washed and uh, that's often the question that people ask can I wash this afterwards and yes you can it's been washed at 40 degrees because if you understand felting it just felt a little bit more so it's not going to come off quite the opposite it fastens it on a little bit more okay I'm going to start by um, embellishing more of this jumper on the back and then I'll also show you how to make these flowers but first of all let's go to the overhead view scene here so the holes I have got are here two little holes and um, I think your creativity is just basically challenged here you just have to think oh what can I do and what I'm going to do is now and this is completely um, I've only just thought of that so it's completely freehand I'm going to uh, needle felt a spider onto here that's up sailing from maybe up here from a spider's web so that's maybe something that you would um, even find on somebody's jumper on the back by the way I hate spiders but um, I don't mind the needle felt style so for this you need um, a felting mat now this is a great um, opportunity to use up small um, spaces especially if you've got to fit a felting mat inside a sleeve so if you've got a small felting mat, then that can fit nicely in there because you need to put it on the inside. Not that I'm felting on the sleeve, but I'm just demoing to you that a small felting mat um, fits into small spaces. I'm going to put this on the back here and I'm making sure if you're using our maker's um, earth mat, make sure that you've got the firmer part facing up so you want that facing up rather than facing down it works quite well with a flat needle felting to have this facing up so there's my two holes and all I need now is um, black wool which of course because I haven't thought of a spider I didn't even get from my stash here so I'm just going to grab some black wool now and then we're off right this is um, this is black wool I'm actually using here the um, the stone well this is a little bit of brown black mold that I've just grabbed and then there, there's some more um in fact that's all the yeah it's just got contaminated so I'm actually using there's a good color that brown black mold color because it's not definitely not brown and it's not completely um, um a black color either I'm doing this completely freehand it might look a little bit childish but that's fine and I'm like literally laying the wall out there and then I'm using um, a coarse needle so depending obviously what fabric you're felting onto you will have to use the needle that actually fits into the fabric sometimes it's better to set out with a coarser needle because they're less uh, prone to breaking so I am literally just shaping a spider's body here now onto um, my jumper and I am making sort of a little indentation for a head here so I'm coming at it from an angle it's a little bit pear shape that's what it looks like at the moment and um, once you stab that into the fabric what it will do it it fastens onto the felting mat inside which is why it's so important you've got that felting mat inside so then you've got to gently lift it off um, and um, I've actually not covered one of the holes there that's still visible so I'm going to make that a bit of a fatter spider now use a little bit more wool lay it over the side there and you this is freestyling so freestyle embellishment which is what I did with the bees and um, with the beehive and the flowers and even the hedgehog that's freestyle um, adding details onto a, a, a piece of fabric or textile or whatever I think this is such a great way you know when your children come or when somebody says oh I want to get this jumper and, and these days you can buy just about everything with any um, motif on it but there might be some things that you just can't get so if you're really into uh, creepy crawlies or something like that 
then just um, add them yourself. So we need now eight legs. That's what we need. And um, so I am making a little strand out of the wool. I'm putting them at an angle, just like a spider's leg. So all I do is I'm going to twist the wool, fit it on here, felt it onto the body first, and then at an angle, I'll put it down. If you don't like what's on there, you can um, almost certainly take it off again. So at this point, nothing's been... <clears throat> um, it's like with anything with needle felting, there's always room to improve and to change things. Another leg there. Box number three. I think that's probably one of the things that creep creeps me out is these these so many legs on the spider and then it's just the way that they move i don't know about anybody else but that i think that is probably the the, the worst thing for me on the spider is the is the number of legs and how they move i know some pe people don't like that they're hairy <laughs> i don't like hairy spiders either. <laughs> why on earth am i making a spider here i know there's one in my workshop that i know that is a spider and i know where it lives and i try to leave it in peace as long as it leaves me in peace so last last leg on this side and i feel it needs to be upside down this spider because the legs are pointing that way now so i've actually got the, the head at the wrong end but i can like i say you can um, adjust lots of things with needle felting so i'm going to do that in a minute as well give it make the head at the other end there's just so much you can always, always um, adjust. Things are often turn out completely different from what you have planned. If you've made a leg that's a little bit too small, then just um, add a bit more wool. Um, again, you can adjust things as you please. And all I'm doing is I've just make sure that they are sort of at a slight angle. I think that is probably quite a distinct um spider leg syndrome there we go remember when you're fastening it on it does actually get secured against your um your felting mat inside i had to take my little cat to uh, the vet this morning she's quite elderly she's 16 and um i don't think she's gonna have much more lives left in her maybe maybe half a life left still um as she's got cancer and um we're just making her comfortable so it's almost like palliative care bless her she's such a happy little soul i love her so much and um yeah she is as as cats go she's a really sweet little thing unlike the other cat we've got who's a grumpy so and so the one that you sometimes see on my facebook um posts um, because he can't help himself. He always finds me when I'm taking photos outside and then he's just there. But I don't know how he manages it. Anyway, that's my spider on there now. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to make the head at the other side now. There's my needle gone there. Um, just make the head here. And then I'm going to um, make um, a long strand of um i feel like i ought to do that in white maybe i use some curls let's see what happens if i do that some really thin because spider webs are often white aren't they so the so the actual line that they hang on or whatever it's called needs to be that color so i'm making this very faint So faint you can't even see it let's just do a little bit more here so I'm, I'm what i'm what you can't see right now is i'm literally teasing bits of curl off and just felting that on okay. in a long it's just a very fine um i'm using the tea scooter curls here because it's such a long fiber and you don't have to um yeah, you don't have to do much with it. Don't have to improvise having shorter lengths and so on. 
and then I'm just going up towards the shoulder because I think it might be quite nice to have a spider's web up there. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole spider's web because that's going to take quite some time. But it might be quite fun if you wear a jumper like this and um, and you have a spider that's hanging down your back because I can't think what else you could put on the back there. That was just a thought of the moment. It just literally occurred to me. I was talking to Alicia earlier. I have actually no idea what I'm doing. I've got a rough plan, but that spider was definitely not part of it. So spider's hanging down, working my way up towards the shoulder. Teasing this out, stabbing it on as I'm, I'm obviously moving the felting mat with it under inside. And just felting it down so I'm at the moment all you've seen me use is a single needle because it's quite precise work I'm doing here so for a spider's web well again you can make it black or you can make it white I hadn't thought of making it white is a spider's web what color is a spider's web I've no idea I feel it's white should be white maybe it's black I don't know maybe I'm thinking of a spider's web in a in um when the dew is on there like in the morning and then um, how many how many corners does it have is, it, is there a set a, a special set of corners in the spider web absolutely no idea I just know they're not always um, very symmetrical are they they can be quite wonky so and I think when you start making a spider's web the best way this is how I would draw it is just to um, sort of roughly get the shape down and then maybe do a few of these circles, so to speak. Oh, you can't see. Sorry, Alicia's going to say in a minute. She's going to turn me off. We can't see you. I've already done it. There. And maybe if I show you another ring so I can uh, move on to something else and also have a look what everybody's talking about. Um, Right. So I'm making another one around this. I think it's when you put the uh, lines in across, that's when it becomes easier to have your, to see the corners of the spider web. Maybe I should have made this in black. I don't know. We'll find out if it looks like rubbish in a minute. And we're going to just take it off. I'm making this with um, these tiny little curls. And I am teasing them apart. Normally I say don't tease the curls, but we do want to stretch them and make them make them sort of almost silk-like because spider webs are very delicate, aren't they? They're not they're not great fat thick things. I'm not gonna do some one inside, I think. Just going to do a couple of um, crossbars, so to speak, and I'm going to leave it. You can add more to the outside, but I think um, I'll I'll be doing this for a long time, and I want to show you some other techniques. So what I'm showing you at the moment is just freestyling anything that you want to embellish your textiles with. You can do this by just literally adding the wool onto the fabric with your felting needle. That is uh, the technique that I'm showing you at the moment. And I've decided to um, to make a spider's web, which, um, and a spider, which might be the wrong choice to do this in white, but that's what I've done. Yeah. And um, just going, putting these parts across there so that we get to the, shape of the net which is a lot more it's a lot less round than what mine looks like now uh, a couple more yeah it'd be interesting to find out how many corners a spider's web has if it's set in as if it's a set number or if it's completely random because i guess the corners are where the web fastens onto whatever is holding it up so whether it's across um, a flower or a fence or um, um, a 
hedge. So these corners will be fastened, fastening into something that is holding it in place. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing that there might be a minimum of corners required. Clever how spiders know that. There we go. Right, that's the spider's web now. I we'll just need to get all the way, lift this off. This is what it looks like from the inside, by the way. So all the wool gets pushed through. And um, I'm just going to extend the, um, the silky thread that the spider is hanging on. So it does go back to the spider's web as well. And there we go. So you could have made this in black, I'm sure, um, if you wanted to. But I've chosen white. Right, so that is basically how to embellish freehand. Um, and I'm just going to go to the front camera so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Spiders hanging down from the spider's web and that would be the back of the jumper now because that the holes were actually here where the spiders are so you would be wearing that and this is the front of it um, that I've sort of started to play with and I'm just going to have a quick look at the comments here because I want to know what people or what what people's worst fashion moments were sorry I've got a sniffly nose now after I've been sneezing um oh bless Dear, oh dear, okay, so I've got some fashion um, things to talk about as well. So, um, yeah, it's really cold today after sunny Easter, really cold. Um, um, sorry, I'm just catching up. <laughs> Don't mind me. Ah, okay, that's what um, Ashley says. She was nearly late because she was busy busy stripping down fish tanks um, and it takes a lot of effort as she has two tanks on one tropical in my bedroom and the cold water downstairs um, so uh, I have a jumper that has a pull in it I want to upcycle perfectly yeah great um, Lorna says hello not sure how long I can watch at a cafe with Glenn oh you're watching from a cafe <laughs> that's hilarious Karen says I have jeans that need to be repaired any thoughts yes 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 we're coming to it we're coming to it I mean it depends of what kind of repair so tell us more about the repair um Jane says um hi from Cornwall uh Carol says um oh no I, I think I'm right well right at the top um my worst fashion moment says Alicia was when I spent half a day with my trousers inside out and the students all realized but were afraid to tell me I went to the loo and found out. <laughs> you would have been in no danger with me, Alicia, to find out. I can promise you that. Um, awkward prawn says, probably the hideous jumpers my mother used to give me. Truly awful. Well, my mother used to knit awful jumpers. And um, yeah, definitely. Um, my worst fashion moment is every morning. I like to wear the same clothes every day anyway. I buy the same leggings and super basic stuff that doesn't sound like a bad fashion moment that sounds like just a, a normal dress day um lots of people like um yes that's right you're quite right karen thank you for saying this helmets for vikings have not got horns that is a um holiday um holiday a hollywood myth thank you karen because people have been saying that um that uh, we need horns on the um, on the um, on the helmet, and you can put horns on. I'm just trying to be um, historically correct. Um, so we Portuguese have a strict sense of fashion overall, but in the UK it's all right anyway. Mine's going long time ago. I do not have leave the trousers in rope though. No way. Hmm. Not sure what that means, but um, it's probably me not getting the gist of it. Carol says, worst fashion moment, turning up at a boyfriend's party, all dressed up, dressed in my two-tone outfit. Everybody else were rockers and heavy metal fans. <laughs> oh, bad fashion moments in helmet, is helmet hair or windswept hair from open top car. Yes, that's how I feel of it today. I'm, I'm having a bit of a hair, a bad hair um, moment. One room left in the big house, hurry up and 
call Sarah now. Thank you, Alicia. That was very clear. Helen says, mine was when I was disoriented going to work. I put my nurse uniform on and went to work. When I got there, I noticed I still had my slippers on. Just to add, I don't drive. Embarrassing. <laughs> oh, um, I'm a fashion nightmare every day, says Rose. Yes, I can. Um, yes, you can share the rooms um, at the retreat. Um, maybe the next I would be keen to join. Um, yes, absolutely. You can sh you can share rooms. We always offer a shared room rate. Um, love the hearts. Is Quatron. Okay, let's get to that soon. Worst fashion moment says Pauline. Me and a friend all dressed in up in our long skirts and pretty blouses for our first ever disco at the local pub. Of course, everyone else was in jeans. No, oh, what 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 is it about having to look the same as other people? Maybe that was your best fashion moment. Um. Hi, Erica. Um, <laughs> Diane doesn't like spiders either. Um, had lots of awful fashion moments with when a child. Um, when a child has had to wear my sister's hand-me-downs. She was a completely different size to me and loved the colour purple, which I hated. <laughs> Poor Elaine. That sounds like childhood trauma. Lorna says, I th I'm thinking of adding some colour to a red cashmere top. Nice. Um, <laughs> don't step me no. I'm so sorry, Diane. Did you have to look away? I don't really don't like spiders either. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you... Um, let's forget the spiders let's go back let's go to this bit here i'm going to show you this in the overhead camera right so basically um i've done a few here already because i used this as a demo piece um at another uh, event um sorry i'm just going to felt these leaves um, not leaves but these branches back down now i think when you wash this this is the sort of thing that would just get established a little bit more um but i show you a particular technique here now of how to um, make it so that it looks a little bit um, so that it doesn't look like you've piled on the flowers there and um, to make these flowers you need a bit of white and and then maybe tiny amounts of pink so these are cherry blossoms and um, they're they're in our garden at the moment which is really lovely and to make these you will have to make five separate little petals but you can needle felt them straight onto the jumper so this is another freestyle example um, you can mix the wool so that you have pink uh, blossoms or you can make white blossoms it's entirely up to you so mix the wool and then you have little little um, you start by needle felting one petal so felt one flat shape down just go for it don't think too much about it then another one so it's next slightly overlapping so we've got a second one there then a third some, if some of the parts look a little bit more pink, that's fine too. So there's my third petal going down now. And I'm still, I'm using a coarse needle still. Seems to work quite well. I think it works well because it's uh, the, this is a loose knit jumper. I mean, it is obviously not knitted loosely, but it's a really easy uh, fabric to get the needle to go through. That might be a little bit different with the denim jeans, which I'm going to show you as well. So adjust the needle to the fabric that you're using rather than the fibre that you're using. I, I think that's what I'm saying. Unless you've got a really tough fibre, then obviously don't persevere with a coarse needle if, it just not, if it's just not going to work. Okay, so I have not used water soluble paper for any of this yet, but I um I will show you how to use that too. And um with a the, none of the project I have shown you has got water soluble paper on there. If anybody wonders, this is either freehand or the the second technique I'm going to show you is by using a biscuit cutter, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I've got my little. It's actually the smallest blossom I've made so far, um, and I just put a little bit of brown inside. So that it, it lifts the blossom up a bit and now this brown that i'm using is actually our portuguese merino and it's 
it's a really short fiber so it's the opposite to these uh, long fibers that I've used from the curls but uh, the reason why I like it is because you can literally paint um, so put establish your wool at one end and then just tease it out and allow it to almost um, break off um, at some at some parts and that makes a really delicate um, looking because what you don't want is you've got delicate le leaves there um, uh, flowers there you don't suddenly want there to be a great big thick um, branch so it, it it doesn't matter even if some of it looks almost like it's disappeared just let it disappear because it, it just adds sort of to the delicacy of your because the the focus point are the are the blossoms not you don't want the um, branch to become the big thing that um, sticks out and um, when I did the hedgehog that's also completely freestyle because if you imagine you've got this already there all you need to do is add a little body underneath so it's a really easy um, easy um, thing to make I'll show you I'll show you fear not I show you let's put another one next to him so they meet nose to nose so there's my curly wool. I'm gonna. I've, that's all I've got of that curly wool. So that's all I'm gonna use now. And I'm just going to felt this down. I'm not even going to arrange this. I'm just felting this into a round hedgehog um, shape. You can felt the body first, but it's actually easier that way. Just make make a round upper of the hedgehog first. And stab into the side to adjust the um, the shape of it and then all you need is um, well I've used a beige color here but I haven't got um, have I got any can I grab some quickly oh I think I've got some I've got some here on the sheep let's take some off here by the way these sheep swatches you can buy them from our shop they are one pound fifty each for um, um, you get a minimum of two grams on there of the wool of your choice and it's brilliant for just drying out um, little if you need a small amount of wool I've just taken some of our caracal which is very long in fiber so I'm just shortening that a little bit and um, that's going to be the body and I want the face to be there so I've got to needle felt that into a pointy nose so I'm focusing on that part first and then I'm just pulling the wool across you don't even need to add legs just put that down that's your hedgehog body again I'm just using a coarse needle Turn it and to just go and make that a little bit flatter for his tummy underneath. Felt it all down, and then all you need is a tiny little bit of um, black for a nose. It goes there, and a little bit of black for an eye. That goes there. It's a little bit of a browner hedgehog. And I think once you put these in, <laughs> put these features in, you suddenly your hedgehog's there. Um, rearrange some of the curls if you need to and what I've done with him I've just given him a little bit of a, um, a base underneath so um, you could just use oh we've got some green curls here they might be quite nice as a feature so just add them in here so that it doesn't look like he's um, floating in the air just add that in and there you go you've got two hedgehogs facing each other and it's a really easy way to add um, a little a little hedgehog into it whether you do it with a white uh, body or with a slightly beiger body and that was just a very impromptu again I hadn't planned that but there you go that's how um, that is done and then get it, your felting mat off and you've got your shapes ready there okay so let's move on to something else because you want to know how to um, use different techniques not everybody is so daring um, to um, to just go for it freehand and let's just yeah let's just go for it so there are um, in fact there's probably three different things I can show you so 
if you are not um, sure that you can um, do anything like that freehand, you might have, as I did here with my scarf, where you've already got a, a pattern on there. These are the little bobbins that are on there. And all you need to do is follow the shape. And I'm not going to um, show you this now because you can do this quite easily. All I have done is I've just picked the wool, red, brown, white. And this, these are the shapes and I've just colored it in. And um, to make exactly the same um, style, exactly the same thing, but it's slightly because it's lifted off the fabric and because it's more colorful, um, I don't think I would colour in every single robin on the scarf. I would probably just sort of just pick a few and colour them in. So that is another way if you've got an existing uh, pattern, you can you can lift it up and add more texture by just felting over the top um, so that it, it becomes um, more of a 3D lifted um, feature on there. The other thing you can do is you can needle felt a little landscape picture which reminds me of our little sunflower pendants. Um, if you don't know this, but these are available to buy from our shop, you can make one of these pendants and you get everything in there that you need to make it, which consists of a piece of felt. It is either felt or uh, pre-felt, um, a whole color palette of wool. There's three yellows in there and um, two blues and a white and a brown and um, two greens. So quite a lot of colors so that you can make your own little feature and you get that um, hoop in there as well. However, if you didn't want to do this, you could also, because this, um, this, it's basically sitting inside this frame. Oh, I've glued it on. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm just taking it off again now. <laughs> so you've got this little picture, which you could quite easily transfer onto your jumper as well. So you can literally just needle felt this onto your jumper now. So let's do this, put this inside. You've made your little picture and, um, oh gosh, I found a couple more holes here. Okay, let's just ignore them. Um, and all you're going to do is you felt this onto your jumper by following the edge. This is where I think it could open up a whole um, a whole thing where you could actually needle felt a picture and then felt it onto your, um, onto your garment. And to speed things up, to have this going on a lot faster, you can use um, the Clover 5 needle felting tool. Um, just have to unlock it. No, it's still not. Now it's unlocked. And with this, you can just go over it really fast. So you're felting the whole lot. You felt it first separately from a picture, and then you're going straight into a fabric. How exciting is that? So you could be felting separate pictures and then felting them on straight onto your garment. And all you've got to remember is to lift it off and then it's fastened on, completely fastened on. You can put this in the wash and that has taken me two minutes to fasten it on. I've got to make another one for the frame now. Yeah, see, it's as easy as that. Totally easy. So you could have more pictures on there, anything you could put, you could needle felt anything on a flat picture this is just felt it onto felt and then felt it back felt it onto your uh, garment I know I'm giving you lots of ideas here but before I move on to the next idea I do want to just uh, remind you that you can get our um, pendant um, and these are the details so you go onto our website um, it's um, the kit is um, is only twelve pound fifty, and five pounds of this will go to the uh, UK, U, Ukrainian charity, which is um, it's the um, oh, I can never remember what it stands for. Disaster emergency. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it is it is a um, it is a um, it's going to the Ukrainian humanitarian appeal from the DEC.org charity. And um, and we have now sold probably near 50 of those kits. So when when at some point we will let you know how much money we have raised, but you are doing a really brilliant job here helping us to support the Ukraine in, um, in the awful things that are happening there at the moment. But you can also needle felt it straight onto your garment. Totally easy. 
um, to do no problem at all. So um, you're all waiting to find out what to do with these genes. And this is um, the pair of jeans that um, Pearl Shorts I have. I've got another pair that I'm about to embellish now. So there we go. Let's have a look. Um, it's good when you've got children who sort out through their clothes quite regularly. So these are um, just an ordinary pair of shorts. And all you need for this is, um, where have I put them? Good question. I know they're here somewhere. Come on. Biscuit cutters. I've got two heart-shaped biscuit cutters somewhere here. I've put down. I might have to look, go looking for them. In the meantime, I'm just going to show you something else. Um, our next live streams, if you're interested, next week it's all about cacti, 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 whichever way it is pronounced. I've no idea. And um, you can. Um, oh, I found the biscuit cutters as well. You can join us on Tuesday, the 26th of April, at one o'clock, and we will do some of these cacti. Um, the the wool that is used in there is our cactus top, which um, came in our January surprise box, Green Fingers, and we have made the last few boxes available as a one-off purchase. So hop onto the website and get those. Then the week after that, it's the sub boxes unwrapped, which are the owl, the queen bee fairy, and our surprise box is street party. And then we have a new live stream um, on the 3rd of May in the new month, which is the Hocklets. Um, they're one of my favorites. They're absolutely super cute. And um, the, um, just trying to think, I think we've got a green fingers. Yes, this is the one that you can get for this live stream is the green fingers, the former January surprise box. And in there you get your little plant pot so you can use it for your um, cactus and then you get plenty of wool to make the actual cactus and flowers on top of it if you wish to do that. Um, whilst we are in the promoting uh, mode here, I also want to tell you that uh, we have got um, our new mouse, mouse kit, which is um, the uh, Jubilee mouse. Um, it's a grey platinum coloured mouse for the Queen's Jubilee 70 years on the throne. And we're celebrating in style with uh, this little mouse, his uh, very um, patriotic little waistcoat and his balloons. And he's very excited to be part of that whole thing. And of course, uh, talking about mice, we have got another mouse that is making um, the rounds. She's quite famous. She might be his wife, maybe, but we're supporting the um, polycystic kidney disease charity. Um, and if you buy a kit from them directly, you have to go to the PKD web website and um, there you can uh, purchase this party mouse and she comes with a little um, tutu skirt and she's holding two balloons in the colours of the PKD charity. And um, she, this is going to be a live stream on a um, private Facebook group that's it's a polycystic kidney disease Facebook group on Wednesday the 18th of May from 7 until 8.30 so you can watch how this little mouse is made and make it together and do something else good for charity as well. Right so let's um, have a look at um, Farmer Biscuit Cutters. Okay this, this does not need to be anything fancy. You don't need fancy uh, templates or cutters or anything like that. It can be as simple as a heart shape and um, I'll show you how to do this. So as before you need um, a felting mat that fits inside and also fits your um, biscuit cutter. And um, what I've done with um, the previous uh, pair of shorts, so there's the felting mat inside now, you need to rest your um, cutter on there. This actually has got a sharp end and a, a not so sharp end. Lay the heart on there the way that you want it to appear. And then what I've done is, um, I really love these funky colors you might not, you might want to use different colours, but I've, I've mixed the neon yellow with the neon um, pink um, so that it makes a marbled effect. So remember, mix in small quantities, don't go crazy with your mixing. Um, and, and with this one, I don't even mix it so precisely. I do want there to be um, quite a, a distinct um, difference between the two colours still. If you keep mixing it, it probably will turn it orange. That's what I guess will happen with these colours. So have enough at the ready. 
hold your cutter down it must not move and then you're going to stop sounds very different because you're going through a uh, denim now and i am actually using my um um coarse needle still and what i'm concentrating on is getting that wool to fit around the edge inner edge of that cutter first because that's how you get that really precise shape um so make sure that you get this felted down. La keep laying the wool out and you might even have to go into the edge a little bit more um, because um, the wool will sort of shrink away from it as you're fastening it down. But go inside that edge and get that really neat um, contrasting um, surround there first. I'm, whole, I'm pushing the biscuit cutter down quite a lot, so much that it's actually marking my thumb. Um, and then mix a little bit more wool and put it around. You can keep this as thin as you like, so that it barely covers the, the surface, or you can make it quite um, thick if you like it to be more of a 3D feature. It doesn't have to be really thin, it can be a little bit thicker. And my mat is almost a little bit too small because I can feel it slipping off there. Um, and I just need one more batch to go into the tip of the heart. Once you've got the wool established in there, and remember you can use other biscuit cutters. You could use hearts as I am, you can use flowers, it can be something Christmassy like gingerbread men, um, something fancy. Um, if you use some uh, the basic cutters, you can just literally fill them in. If you're using something that's a little bit more um, sophisticated, like say a dinosaur or something like that, you might have to give it features. But now this isn't felted down properly yet, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my five um, multi-tool and I'm just literally stabbing the middle down. So obviously I can't get very close to the edge because the shield or the, the tool itself is preventing me from doing that. But at least I can felt the uh, middle down and then I could also use my three needle felting tool and go a little bit closer to the edge again with my three needle felting tool. Now this needle felting tool, the clover needle felting tool, actually lifts off the bottom part of the um, handle and that way you can get really close to the edge. So if you ever wondered why is that there, well this might be one of the reasons why it's there and you can take it off because I know Clover, they do actually sell templates that you can use. And once you've got this fastened on, this is quite hard on your hand, on your arm, I guess, because you have to start quite um, deeply into it. You can take the shape off. You have got quite a neat edge. If for whatever reason it's not neat enough to your liking, then you can go over it again with a single needle and just make it a little bit um, neater even afterwards. You can also still go over it with your multi-tool and felt it down a little bit more all around as well. And um, let's do that. Get it down there, make it nice and neat. Um, but this will make a precise shape basically. And then when you take it off there, it will stay on there and you've transferred um, a nice, a nice neat motif onto, um, I don't know, so if you want to jazz up some of your jeans, then go for funky colours, bold, bold shapes, and, um, and get, um, get that down in no time. And you can, like I say, you can even out the edges. This one has got a bit of a dent now. There, that's better. Be, be precise by um, going over the edges, but get them down first so that they are established and then go over it again. And that's basically how you would um, use a, um, a separate shape. I've got a smaller one here as well, plastic, metal, whatever you've got knocking around at home. And, um, and that gets something like that on, onto your jeans. So I think that's quite fun and funky to do for um, maybe for um, a nice, maybe you've got a special occasion event because it could be a theme like, you know, how often do you think where people say, oh, dress in 
um, 60s clothes or flower power or whatever and you think oh flower power but you could need to put lots of flower motifs onto your onto your boring tops that you um, you don't you don't mind um, having um, transformed and then suddenly you've got uh, an outfit that is totally unique nobody else will turn up in it guaranteed and um, and you can even say I did this myself so that is another way of doing it. Now I want to show you a third way, and I've got about five minutes to do that. Um, <laughs> there's all these uh, worst fashion moments go going on still here, but I don't want to spend too much time on there. Um, all of you who are watching, please do give us the thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are subscribed, you get notifications when we're on next. So I tell you now next week is Tuesday at one o'clock. We're doing the cacti, but you might by then you might have forgotten. Well, if you're anything like me, I forget these things within an hour. Um, but it will tell you actually if you've got notifications um, on your uh, whatever you signed into. It will tell you. It's coming, it's coming. Um, we always try and uh, remind you on Facebook as well, but um, this is the, a sure way to not miss out. And um, so the third, or maybe it's the fourth, um, different variety of embellishing your garments or upcycling them. Remember, you can um, cover up holes that way. You can, um, if you've got, uh, somebody said they have to repair some jeans, so I'm kind of assuming you had a hole in your jeans, so that larger heart shape on there would probably take care of it. I mean, there is a there comes a point when um, if, if it's only held together by needle felted uh, motifs, it might not be the best solution anymore. So, um, but that certainly will take care, especially if you're uh, putting a picture on onto it, because that could also be bigger. Um, and um, the last and final um, bits that I want to share with you is I actually decided to use the fairy folk book for this because, and this is, this is um, what popped into my head, so if you want to make a precise shape, but you, you're too worried about using a um, using something that you have to do freehand, you can actually um, use a set shape. And I thought this might be quite nice, this little fawn here. And for this, you need um, whatever template you um, can come up with, and you need some water-soluble paper. And um, I'm going to cut some of this out so you can get our water soluble paper that's perfect for needle felting. This is not going to be dissolved, it's going to be, it stays part of it. For those of you who've done the Animals in the Wood Advent project, you will know exactly where I'm going with this. Um, and um, all you need is a piece of water soluble paper, cut it to the size that you want. Um, it to be uh, covering your um, your template below. Then you need a pencil, preferably I prefer using an, um, a, a fairly blunt pencil, and then you trace the outline of the project. And what I do is I also trace sort of some of the lines inside the project, but because you've got a, especially if you're using a colored in a template, which I would highly recommend, you will have uh, a lot of the sort of places where later on you have to put the exact detail on is already in um, on on that on that um, shape itself, but just put sort of roughly where things are going. That's the ear there, and so because you can see through it, just trying to get my bearings there. That's the the haunch there, the foot. It's another. Sometimes you have to just uh, remind yourself what you're actually drawing, or I do anyway. There. That's all I'm going to put on there, and then you can um, needle felt this separately first of all. So you need your felting mat. Um, I'm just gonna have to find a larger mat because that one is definitely too small. Let's get this one down. There. Put this on your felting mat. Again, um, our earth mat comes in different sizes, so this is the A4 now that I'm using. And you're now going to color this in in the colors that, um, well, in the colors that you choose, which it would be good if I had those colors here. But of course, everything is always improvised from my part, so I'm just going to get some fawn colors 
that I can use um, to colour in my fall. And I've got some um, nice browns here, exactly what I've probably used. Maybe some rust fox brown. Let's get some... Um, I'm just going to pull some colours out there and then see how far I get with them. So I have that um, finished picture um, ready so that you can um, follow the um, the colourings. But first of all, you need to get your shape coloured in. Just finding my picture again. And this this I've taken out of the fairy, uh, needle felted fairy folk um, book because I thought it would be quite nice to have that as a... As a um, well, I, I definitely know there's no copyright in pinches there. So use this as your uh, template and then colour in, colour it in. And um, later on you can add the features into it. I just need to find my felting needle. Where did I put it? Put it in my, there. So uh, as before, when you felt onto um, the fabric directly, you're just following the shape. If you have um, done anything like our butterfly um, tutorials, or if you've seen the, um, um, the the leaves, autumn leaves, if you've needle felt it onto water soluble paper, then you pretty much know already what you're doing here. You're literally coloring in that shape and any sort of nuances you can add later or any details like the eye and so on. I've put it down because it kind of reminds me where it is while I'm looking at it in, in relation to other things. But I'm literally just colouring in that shape now in the right colours. So the ear is a different colour. And um, I'm making sure that I'm keeping within the outline of my water soluble paper traced um, shape here. And you just need to make sure that you cover it wholly so that you don't have water, that, that you don't have the white paper showing still. But I, I am already going to um, add in the details here. Now, unlike with water soluble paper, when you're washing it out, you don't need to worry too much about um, um, the wool overlapping because you're not going to wash this out. So this is going to stay in the water soluble paper. It is. It it will completely integrate into the project. But I am already putting the eye in there now. Now, when you're needle felting onto water soluble paper, you definitely have to peel this off and be gentle because it can tear. And um, if you want to start adding sort of a little bit of a different color into it, you can. So you can um, add colors into it as you go along. Now with the eyes, I want to definitely give it a bit of a white eyeliner in a minute. Some of those details you can actually add in when you are um, felting it onto the uh, final um, fabric where it's going to. So you don't have to do this yet. You can do this later. Um, so with, I just need to add a bit of the ear in there. Maybe add a little bit of brown into it so it doesn't look quite so white. So mix your worlds. Um, you've got if you've got some a picture to copy, then that's much easier to do than if you have to do it from the top of your head. But definitely look up images. If you need to follow something and um, I felt that down and then it's got a little bit of a brown outer here I'm doing this really fast at the moment so if you've got lots of time then obviously you'll be doing this a lot more precise and um, and more carefully than I do this usually always always fast so you don't need to keep up with my speed. Um, you can do this a lot more precise and slower. Lift it off. If I put the light high eyeliner on around the eyes already. There. It's like a little bumpy. A little bit on the top. As well. 
I am still just using my coarse needle. I haven't changed from my coarse needle actually, um, other than using the multi tools. It seems to be working really well, certainly for um, the 2D needle felting. But do make sure that you are um, using the firmer side of your um, mat. And whilst this isn't a, pr a completely precise shape, lost some other oh, some brown. Um, sorry. Um, yes, you can adjust all of this when you're felting it onto um, the garment as well. So just get get it down. This is very similar to what you did if you've did if you've done this um, during our advent uh, project, animals in the wood, where you had the separate shapes of the animals and then you transfer them onto the large wall hanging. Um, whilst you are giving them the details. Um, so for example, with the fawn, I would put the little spots on as, as a detail when I felt it onto the garment. And that is just another way of how to, um, to embellish or upcycle a textile. And of course you can do this on sofa cushions, you can do this as long as you fit the needle through it. It even works on canvas. I'm sure that um, I, uh, there's somebody who has needle felted onto canvas. Um, it is it might be a bit of a needle breaker, but it's totally possible that you can do that. So um, just try it out. If it fits the needle, you can felt onto it. Just keep the wool, whatever you're putting over the top, keep it nice and thin and measured so the needle doesn't have to do extra work. And um, any details that needs to go into the fawn now, so we're dif differentiating where the haunch is and where the, um, the legs are, you can add those details onto the, um, the shape once you've fastened it onto your um, garment and um, you do need to cut around it before you put it onto the garment but you do not need to dissolve the water soluble paper that can stay in there nobody's any the wiser I knew you were going to ask that the the advent pdf is um, I'm, I've actually been thinking about this over Easter believe it or not um, I am going to have to ask for help for that one because something went wrong with the whole um, PDF and it's absolutely fine. It's not It's not a big wrong. It's just it needs a bit of patience of sorting it out. So I'm going to get Alice on the case. Um, right, I'm going to put this phone into the... So I'm hoping that we can sort this out by the end of this month that you can all um, get the PDF for the Advent project. So all you need, need to do now is you're going to fasten this onto your um, garment, textile, whatever you're embellishing. You might want to put this on the rim of a, of a woolly hat or, um, I don't know, some... I, I remember that um, I, I bought lots of hand-me-downs for my children in the past and there was often something wrong with it, like, I don't know, there was a hole in it or something like that and I would just... Um, needle felt some some of their favorite things onto it and suddenly it was like the best thing on the planet it was a five pound charity shop find like a coat like a woolen coat I remember that doing it on there on jumpers on all kinds of things and suddenly it became the best things in sliced bread and they just absolutely loved it because it had um, it had a, a bunny on there or it had a dog on there or something like that and um, and so there is there is a lot to be said for this upcycling and this embellishing of, of fabrics and uh, garments and getting them back up um, up on the top list of favorites um, in no time whatsoever so I've got to just look picture to get so some of the shading right here and um, you can you can do this literally after it's been added into it. I'll just add a little bit of um, just mix the wool so that you get slightly darker shade. Add the orange into there. Could even be a little bit darker, but I, I think you might just about see it because you're also felting it down, felting a line down. There it is. Um, and then get that foot sorted a bit better. Again, just felting a slightly darker shadow into it. 
eine, where the foot is, and then fawns often have like quite dark um, hoofs, so you can give it a little bit of a dark hoof here, and that's the front leg folded up, tucked under. The, the water soluble paper will literally just disappear into the fabric. So that is another way of how you can quite easily um, um, use your needle felting skills. Well, even if you haven't got any, this is a great way to learn to needle felt. Add some of the white spots into it. And all of that isn't just adding um, an embellishment on top. It also obviously fastens the whole thing onto the garment as well. I've had a, um, um, a moment where I thought I put the felting mat not inside the garment but um, over the just underneath the whole doubled up garment but I didn't it's fine you're fine right so hopefully Alicia is going to um, um, choose pick a winner in a minute as well um, so that we know who's won today competition and um, on YouTube, I usually say the names out loud, but if you're watching this on Facebook on Thursday, then obviously um, keep tuned in to the end because it will come up in the comments. Um, if we can, we will usually tag you. Um, and I could add a lot more detail onto theirs to, to sort of, um, obviously this is part. So we've got the winners. We've got Karen W. Karen, well done. I know there's two Karens. So it's Karen W. and Lynette. Lynette um, is the second winner today on um, YouTube. And it is the um, 19th of April 2022. If you're watching this any other time, um, you cannot win anything any other time. It's all done and dusted now unless you're watching this on our Facebook um, repeat stream on Thursday, which will be the 21st of um, April, and it's on our main page, The Makers, with two S's. Our social media handle is w is um, um, at themakers.co.uk. Um, right, there's the phone. As much as I can do in the short time, you can add a lot more detail into it. But I think um, I think I've demonstrated you sufficiently that it's really quite easy to transfer any of your two Ds onto um, a jumper to embellish it. And um, there's the phone, so you can see him. And what I would do is I would put a little bit of grass underneath it, a little bit of green, maybe a bit of brown, anything so that it doesn't look like he's floating. And um, and fear not, you can wash all of this in your um, washing machine. Wash it at the scarf, like I said, I washed at 40 degrees, but it, it, if, if anything else, it should add, it should fasten it onto it more rather than pulling it off because the, you've started the felting process and your washing machine will just finish off what you've started, basically. So um, that's all. Um, so you've got, um, just as a recap, you've got your freehand needle felting here. You've got your pictures added um, motifs added separately, felted first and then added on and then you can also use um, biscuit cutters or any kind of template that you can felt into to add to your um, to your garments directly and that goes on to anything you can stab a needle into. So this is whether this is uh, jeans, um, linen, cotton, Definitely wool is, is great for it. Um, your sofa cover, um, your so cushion covers, anything. Share with us what you've done. And uh, I'm sure you can think of lots more of our ideas. But just just think outside the box. If somebody said, oh, I've always wanted a t-shirt with this on it. You can do it because you can do it yourself. And I'm sure that um, the internet is a wealth of um, a wealth of resource if you need to find a picture of something very specific that you want to uh, needle felt and turn into a motif to go onto your onto your um, textile fabric jumper um, hoodie jeans skirt i don't know hat bag 
cushion, anything, anything that um, needs a bit of a lift. So that's all for me today. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, just going through the bits and pieces that I've been meaning to talk to you about. Remember, our Earth Day competition is still up and running. Um, tell us what you do with your eco wool mat that comes in our kits. Um, one of the ideas could be that you use them to get into small places inside your um, textiles. Um, we have, I've told you about some of the uh, new products we have got. I haven't mentioned our fairy bundle, but we have got a brand new fairy decoration bundle, number three and four. We've done number one and two separately, but we've we've um, joined up three and four. So there, um, there's just so much stuff in there that you can um, split out. Um, we've got new wool mixes that you might have seen. I don't want to inundate you with any more thumbnails, but um, basically tune in next week for our cactus um um live stream and i really look forward to seeing you then and share with us what you've done we're at the makers on instagram and at the makers.co.uk on facebook thank you very much thanks for giving us the thumbs up have a great um day and um i hope that you um haven't eaten too many easter eggs um so um yeah that's it really bye